seeing shapes in the stars. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Hey, Dean. Have you seen the Big Dipper this summer? I have. After all, it's my favorite constellation. Hmm. Dean is laughing because he knows darn well that the Big Dipper is not a constellation. I know, I know. I just like messing with you, James. Hmm. The Big Dipper is only part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major or the Big Bear. So if it's not an official constellation, what do we call it? We call it an asterism. An asterism is basically just a shape we see in the stars to help us find our way around. Think of it as an unofficial constellation. And summertime is a great time to find many of the asterisms in the sky. Exactly. We've got the summer triangle, the fish hook, and the teapot. Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set up for any night this week facing northwest after sunset. Now that we're into July, the sun sets really late. So use this as an excuse to stay up past your bedtime. Definitely, because we want you to find your first asterism of the evening up in the northwestern sky. There it is, standing on its spoon, the Big Dipper. The formation of those seven bright stars is unmistakable. Four stars make the spoon of the Big Dipper, and three more make up the handle. Now, where's that big bear that'll turn my asterism into a constellation? Aha, I see it now. Ursa Major, the Big Bear, takes up a lot of space in the sky. The Big Dipper is only the rear end and long tail of the bear, while other fainter stars mark his head and feet. Astronomers don't just stop there. To them, everything within this boundary, every star, every deep space object, is part of the constellation Ursa Major. Wow, that's a big bear! Now we're facing east, and here you can find another huge asterism in the sky. I'll give you two hints. It's up all summer, and it's in the shape of a triangle. Yep. We call it the Summer Triangle. Who said astronomy was tough to follow? Brightest and bluest of the three stars in the Summer Triangle is Vega. Down and to the left is Deneb, and way over to the right is Altair. Each of these stars belongs to its own constellation. Vega is part of Lyra the Harp, whose stars make a little parallelogram. Deneb is the tail of Cygnus the Swan. Ooh, I can actually picture a swan in those stars. And Altair is the eagle eye of the constellation Aquila the Eagle. So this asterism, the Summer Triangle, really incorporates three regions of three different constellations. Now let's face south and look low on the horizon for two more distinct asterisms. Here we find the stars I most associate with summer, looking like the letter J or a big fish hook. Add in the fainter stars around the fish hook and you'll see the constellation Scorpius the Scorpion. At the heart of the Scorpion, you'll find a red supergiant star called Antares. As an added special effect, Antares is often low in the southern sky and appears to flicker like a beating heart through the thicker atmosphere. The planets Mars and Saturn are also hanging around Scorpius this summer. Now, to the left of the fish hook, you can find stars in the shape of a teapot. These stars are part of a larger constellation called Sagittarius the Archer. He's a centaur, half man, half horse with his legs down below the horizon for most people in the U.S. Other than the teapot, the remaining stars in Sagittarius are tough to find. But the asterism marks the centaur's body and outstretched bow and arrow. What's he aiming at? Antares, the heart of the scorpion, of course. Watch out, Scorpius! So find your favorite asterism tonight, from the Big Dipper in the northwest to the Summer Triangle high in the east to the fish hook in the south next to the teapot. And it's all there when you keep looking up.